Yellowstone supervolcano quick swarms. We finally know what caused those three months of swarms. Researchers believe they know what caused a swarm of earthquakes that occurred in and around Yellowstone National Park's active supervolcano system last summer, and it's not the imminent doom of a looming apocalyptic eruption. Now, this is a map of USGS, the caldera and the boundary of the park, as you can see in the black bold line. The Maple Creek earthquake swarm is in the upper left-hand side. And uh, just as a matter of reference, the Hepkin Lake area is outside of the scope of the map, just left of the Maple Creek earthquake swarm area. So Hebgen Lake that had the huge 7.3 magnitude earthquake in August of 1959, even though it's not in the park boundary line, it is of course part of Yellowstone supervolcano. Just like Manhattan, Man uh, Montana is outside of the boundary of the, super, the Yellowstone Park area, but is still a part of the supervolcano. So what caused these earthquakes? It's known as the 2017 Maple Creek Earthquake Swarm. It's a batch of earthquakes that was one of the most persistent earthquake swarms observed in the western edge of the park. The main episode lasted more than three months. It produced thousands of earthquakes and even though most were very small, a few were large enough to be felt in the area of the park. This is what the Caldera Chronicles wrote concerning that earthquake swarm. It's a weekly column, as we know, written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the USGS survey. Seismologist David Shelley says that the patterns of the swarm suggests that the earthquakes were probably caused by water diffusing through the cracks of the Earth's subsurface and not the movement of magma, even though that can sometimes generate earthquake swarms at volcanic sites. He says it's the water. Quote, the involvement of this water may in part explain why these swarms are sometimes long-lived, why they expand dramatically over time, and why the fault structures are so complex. This also may explain why swarms are common in volcanic areas where water is a byproduct released from deeper magma as it cools. We often see chemical evidence of this type of water at surface springs and fumaroles. Now water under the deep crust is under great pressure, causing it to migrate up and sometimes sideways when it interacts with cooler, brittle rocks that are already stressed by tectonic and volcanic processes, it can trigger earthquakes. He goes on to explain that in fact earthquakes themselves may allow the fluid to migrate more efficiently through faults in the rock. And he said, noting that the earthquakes were not accompanied by other signs of volcanic unrest, indicating the caldera is not going to blow its lid anytime soon. This swarm is captured in great detail, in a greater detail than any other before it, because it was due to investments in more advanced seismic technologies. They had more monitoring. It allowed scientists to have more data than ever to detect and precisely locate earthquakes in the swarm which can provide evidence and causes of the seismic swarms in the area. The technique that the researchers used that involved comparing waveforms of recorded earthquakes, providing their locations with even greater precision, it allowed the scientists to detect and locate thousands of other earthquakes that may have otherwise been too small to spot. And Shelley says that earthquake swarms like this are business as usual for the Yellowstone caldera and reflect ongoing low-level tectonic and volcanic processes in Yellowstone.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.